those clear rounds that we had, those three clears from the first round. If they just have one rail down, then they're back to the group. Rail down there. That's 9B for James Arkins and Ross Waite Vigilante. Big ride to fence 11. Really taking it on at the last there. Well, just the one rail down there for James Arkins and Ross Waite Vigilante. Rail falling at 9B. It is. So he has a combined total from his two rounds of eight faults. The time there of 49.88. Time allowed on this, round, on this second round is 60 seconds. Even. Now we have back in the ring, Chris Chug and Sarah Casiago. Well, approaching the start, this is Chris Chug, and he, like James Arkins, very fast riders. Able to really be efficient on their turns, and that's the main main thing here. It's not necessarily how fast you can gallop around a course like this, it's how efficient you can be in your corners. John Valance mentioned it earlier. It's just finding an area where you can slice off a little bit of distance, make such a difference when it comes down to the fractions of a second that can win or lose these big World Cup classes. But Chris, very, very experienced in this sort of situation. He knows he's carrying four penalties from the first round. Here to the last. Lovely fence. Well, it's a clear round there for a true Chris Chug and Sarah Cassiago in a time of 50.61. So he carries forward the four faults from the first round, but he is sitting in the lead at this time. He's got just the four faults at a time there. Four faults from the first round, clear in the second round, a time of 50.61 seconds. Here we go with David Dobson and Oaks Zena from Western Australia. Also carries through the four faults from the first round. Well, very unfortunate first fence there for David Dobson and Oak Cena. Question is whether that changes his tactics as he jumps around. Does he go faster and hope that a fast eight fault round will get him in the prize money still? There's 10 riders here. Top six will be coming back for the presentation. Also rail down there at 9B. Approaching the last and clear over the last. So eight faults there for David Dobson and Oaks Zena. Add to the four faults from his first round. So that gives him a total of 12 faults over the two rounds of this IRT jumping grand final class. Interesting also the time of 51.08. So the fastest time we have still a James Arkins. 
but our leader at this point is Chris Chug and Sarah Cassiago. Receiving their bell, this is Christy Bruin. This is Christy Bruin and Jack. Taking that, riders all taking that tight line to the IRT vertical there. It was the first fence in the first round. Course designer John Valance being very clever, turning his fences around, maximising what he has. No trouble there for Christie through. Still difficult fences there in the 9, 8, 9, B and C combination. Comes down to the last. No trouble over that. That's a clear round there for Christy Bruin and Jack. Top of 53.69. So she has just the four falls. For her total in this IRT jumping grand final. So good. Four faults to the time of 53.69. Slips her into second position at this point behind Chris Chug on Sierra Casiago. Just about to receive their bell low. Brings, also brings forward the four faults from his first round. This is Brooke Dobbin and Silvo. No trouble there at first two fences for Brooke Dobbin and Silvo. Brooke, very efficient turn there up to what we'll call fence 15. And it turns up, it's been a difficult combination even without the three fences, just as a double, it's difficult. No trouble there for Silvo. How quick can he be? We know that. Well, he's very great round there for Brooke Dobbin and Silvo. Time of 51.58, but that is clear on jumping. And that slips him into the second place. It moves Christy Bruin and Jack down into third. At this point, our leader still Chris Chug with the fastest of the four falters on 50.61. It was his time. Brooke Dobbin, 51.58. So we are now into the last of the four fault riders combinations from the first round. This is Chris Chug riding Crystalline. Well, this will be interesting to see what Chris Chug does now. We know he's the fastest of the four falters on his previous horse. Time of 50.61. Can he beat himself? Sure, there's nothing Chris would like more than to be first and second in this IRT jumping grand final class. Going to need some mistakes from our current leaders who are still to jump their second rounds here. 
but he is looking quick over the last. Well, that is a clear round for Chris Chug and Crystalline. Time of 50.70, so he does slip into second position at this point in the competition. Just in behind himself, so he was just nine hundredths of a second slower than his first ride on Sierra Casiago. So he remains in first and second positions. Chris Chug with third position, currently filled by Brooke Dobbin and Silvo. Concord Ego Z. As we said, he has one time penalty to carry through from the first round of competition. Ladies and gentlemen, this is David Dobson and Concord Ego Z. Uh, he's clear over the first three fences. David Dobson, Concord Ego Z, r real competitor from Western Australia. He won't leave anything out there in the arena in his desire to take home this IRT Jumping Grand Final Championship. Looking very good so far, but we Almost taking a more conservative approach to Chris Chug. His time's going to be much slower. He's, ah, interesting. There. Concord Ego Z taking a dislike to that final wall. This is difficulty with Stallions sometimes. They do have a mind of their own. As David uses all his skills there. That is very surprising. Well, unfortunately for David Dobson and Concord Ego Z, the two refusals at the final fence in this second round at the IRT Jumping Grand Final does mean elimination from the competition. But we are now down to our final three riders and these riders are all coming in with zero faults from their first round of competition. And the first of these is Stephen Hill riding Yalambi's Bellini Star. So this is where it will very get very, very interesting in the second round of the IRT Jumping Grand Final. Well, we all shake off the surprise of seeing the elimination of David Dobson and Concord Ego Z. Doesn't take any time at all for Stephen Hill and Yolambi's Bellini star to get underway. They're clear over the first two fences here. Just shows what an unexpected sport jumping can be, in fact. All across, I mean, they're amazing. Well, unfortunately, that is a fall for Stephen Hill, Yolambi's Bellini star at fence seven. We'll get Stephen checked out very quickly. Stephen is up, and a big round of applause there for Stephen Hill, Yolambi's Bellini star.
Good to see Stephen and Yulambi's Bellini star up on their feet and off to fight another day. As we indeed will here in this IRT jumping grand final, there's two riders still to go. Gives us the opportunity to focus now on our second to last ride in this IRT jumping grand final. Receiving their bell, this is Alan Tinas, ridden by Merrick Eubank. Well, it's been a very surprising turn of events for the last two riders. David Dobson eliminated the final fence, the wall of fence 11, and then a very unpleasant fall there for Stephen Hill and Yolambi's Bellini star. Merrick Eubank, very experienced rider, put everything back on track for us in this IRT jumping grand final. He carries zero faults in from the first round of competition. He is looking good so far in this second round. No trouble there over fence seven. Always good to see. Let's move on quickly from that sort of event. And he's good over fence eight as well. Looking to maintain his clear round. Zero faults really put the pressure on James Arkins, who is the last rider to come in this IRT jumping grand final as Merrick comes down to the last. Has a real shot at it. Lovely over fence 11, the last fence. Well, a clear round there for Alantinas and Merrick Eubank in a time of 52.98. Puts them straight into first position and puts all the pressure on the last rider in this IRT jumping grand final class. And that is James Arkins from the Southern Highlands in New South Wales. And he is riding a quality Euro. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the last rider we'll be seeing in the IRT jumping grand final, James Arkins, quality Euro.